Hello and welcome along to a special edition uh, of Al's Geek Lab here on the show. Today I'm going to be talking uh, to all the people who are affected from the COVID-19 virus and who are now working from home. I'm going to share a few of the tools and the uh, tricks that I've found is uh, working for me so far, although I'm only on day two. Uh, but uh, you may notice that I'm on a different camera today. I'm on a webcam, not the usual uh, camcorder so apologies if the quality is a little poor but that's just to show you I guess the way that I'm using the tools whilst I'm working away. So I work a, a sort of 40 plus hour week um, and all my usual videos on YouTube are on top of those. Um, so, so far I've managed to stay sane and uh, I've been in pretty good contact with my team. And there's a few tools and things that I've used to help along the way. So I'll just quickly go over what they are. But first things first, when I got home um, and I knew the impending doom of working from home was kicking in, I knew I had to get my home office sorted. And from home, I've, I've been able to do absolutely everything. However, I knew that I'd like to take my work laptop home um, so that I could keep work, work, and my own laptop, my own. And doing that was a bit difficult because I realized very quickly that I have two monitors set up, which are my monitors for my own laptop. And then I thought, well, how am I going to plug all this in? I didn't have the right cables to begin with and I wasn't going to go down to the shops and buy more cables. And anyway, I'd have to switch from monitor to monitor. So I have to press the button on the monitor itself to change sources every time I wanted to uh, move monitors. So that would have been a real pain if I wanted to quickly switch between workloads on my own laptop to the work laptop. Um, so And then also the big thing, obviously, is having one keyboard and mouse for one computer and on the same desk another keyboard and another mouse right so um a bit of a nightmare really and i was trying to think of uh, ways to get around this and of course there are lots of ways that you can get around this um, uh, KVMs, for example, is, is one method, um, and you've got all sorts of different methods as well. But the option that I cho chose was a piece of software called Synergy. This allows me to have a software KVM, if you will. So I don't have to swap between monitors or keyboards or mice or anything like that. I've got one keyboard, one mouse, and it allows you to move between Windows, Linux, Mac, all different flavors of operating system. Now here I've just got two Windows 10 machines, but that doesn't, doesn't matter. You can choose whatever you want. So yeah, this is a website. It, it is a paid product. I think it's $29 US. Um, however, um, if you have a good look around, there is some old software, old versions of Synergy, which was free. So you might be able to have some luck with that. Setting it up is not completely uh, simple. I found it a little bit tricky. This is the application. It hides itself after you start it up. So you've got to choose whether you've got a server or a client. Now, the way to remind, remember this is that the server is the machine which you want to always use the keyboard on the mouse off. The client, obviously, is the machine that you, you can throw away the keyboard and the mouse off. All right. So I've got this one here, my work computer set up as the client and my personal computer uh, set up the server. I mean, it doesn't really matter, um, but, you know, that's the slight nuance you have to be aware of. So with the client, all you need to do is point it to the laptop, which is the, or the name or the IP address of the, um, the server one. So uh, the, all, the other way around, when you're configuring the server, you just tell it what um, the, uh, it, just, it just chooses the IP address and also it knows the host name, um, but you have to configure the server. And that's mainly straightforward. You click on this icon here and it gives you this server configuration thing. Now, this was, uh, for me, it wasn't very clear what you have to do, but you just drag and drop this uh, monitor here, which is actually for a computer, um, and say, you know, whatever you want to call it. So I'll call it home laptop. And then you need to put in uh, the name of the the host name of the machine. Alternatively, you can put the IP address as well. All right, so you can do that. Um, so if you don't know what your host name is or your IP address for that matter, you can type in and you can go into CMD from the start menu 
and then you can type in host name which will give you the host name of the pc or you can type in ip config and that will tell you the ip address of your machine as well um, so there you go that that's how to set that up there press ok and then press ok once again and then that's allow that allows you to then connect um, as a, uh, allows you to work as a server um, so that that's that's how you set it up it's not it's not super easy and it also need to make sure that your firewall is not blocking uh, the connection on both machines as well but once you've got this set up it really is um, fantastic because it uh, you know gets gets all of that mucking around between multiple machines out of the way so that's a that's a real time saver um, and I've really enjoyed using that so far Now the second thing that is important is when you're on uh, conference calls, the software that you use is quite important because you don't want breakup, you want to be able to hear people, so the video quality and the audio quality is pretty important. Now I've been using a piece of software called Zoom, if you haven't tried Zoom yet I highly recommend it, I find it much better, much more consistent with quality over the likes of Skype. Um, and Teams and um, WebEx and so forth as well. So really, a uh, really good piece of software. Um, it is free for for um, sort of uh, use, which up to I think it's up to forty five minutes in length. Um, but you're really really nice software. Again, um, I'll just launch that and show you the in interface is is okay it's not brilliant but um once you're in a meeting um that it works just exactly how you'd want to do it there's pro licenses which allow you unlimited recipients and unlimited uh, duration of meetings so really a handy piece of software uh, definitely recommend if you're doing video conferencing you use that what I'd also recommend is that you get a good camera um, to pick up the quality and of course a good um, audio um, headset um, here's a audio headset that I've been using. I couldn't actually get a, a normal one in time, so this is a bit, um, it's a bit full on. But this is a sort of gaming one, I think, um, and it cost uh, ninety bucks from the the local computer shop. And this is all I could get because all of the headphones that, that sort of uh, headsets had been sold out. Um, because there was a mad rush in the store for everybody to get things like this. So um, this is what I got, but really good audio quality. It's nice and um, nice and soft padding on that as well. So, okay, it's great for gamers, but actually for people who are working um, on video conferences and stuff like that pretty much all day, it's great, for, it's great for sticking on your head for hours and hours as well. And it's got a reasonably good mic uh, pickup as well. And it's just on a 3.5 mil jack. Um, so yeah, things like that you consider. This this one actually has um, these are these are by a company called Astro, which is actually just Logitech. Um, but this microphone, when you slide it up like that, it mutes the microphone. Handy little thing. I, I do look a bit like a robot, but it does the job quite nicely. So yeah, good good uh, good to make sure that when you're on um, a call that the audio quality is good and of course the video quality is good. One, make sure you've got a good webcam. Two, make sure you've got a good mic. If you're if you're using the one on the computer, make sure that it's um, you know it's there's not lots of distortion. That the pickup quality is good. All these sorts of things really matter because in the end, you know you're going to have other people trying to listen to you. Um, then it's important to, to, to have the best possible way to interface with them. Um, you'll notice that this is a bit echoey and that's kind of deliberate because I've got it on this internal microphone here and you can hear it's really tinny and, and rubbish so the pickup on this is much better and of course I've got professional mics as well kicking in for my um, for my sort of post video casting and oh, <laughs> it's over there. Anyway so that sort of stuff but um, yeah to have, to have a head set like this combined with a good webcam is, is perfectly good. So this is just a sort of fairly standard webcam. Apparently it's an HD 1080 and it's a Logitech brand. Um, so yeah, um, 
make sure you've got the right equipment if you can. If you don't have them right now, maybe try and get them ordered to your house on Amazon or, or whatever it is that you use. So the software I'm using to grab the screen here is called Snagit. Um, I was, uh, I think I might have been a customer of theirs before, but um, I got an email through the other day uh, offering me a complimentary copy uh, for those who are um, working from home due to COVID-19, which was nice of them. Uh, so I managed to get a download, a free download of TechSmith Snagit, and it just helps me record content um, and show other people what I'm doing. Um, also, Zoom offers a similar functionality, it allows you to share the screen uh, in, in a live meeting and also allows you to um, uh, allow uh, interaction so you can actually give the keyboard and mouse to some other people who are on the call as well. Now when I've recorded video from Zoom or, or even say uh, Snagit or anything like that sometimes the size of the file is too large and uh, well for uploading basically I, I like to upload the content uh, it's pretty handy um, but obviously when you're recording video uh, whether it's via zoom so you can allow, you can use zoom to record your desktop as well as um, as as well as share the the desktop you can share the desktop but you can allow other people to use it as a remote desktop so you can actually be on a call and then share your screen but allow them to uh, work on your machine at the same time so it's pretty pretty handy there but when you record these videos the size the file size itself can be quite large and so obviously you need some way of shortening those if you're uploading them to um, a website or, or in my case Confluence or Wiki. So to do that what I've been doing is using a piece of software which is free called Handbrake um, and you can download that for Windows or Linux or Mac and uh, yeah, you just choose a, a particular format and then you, it'll, um, it'll save and, and you change the quality and it'll allow you to uh, greatly reduce the overall size of the video file. So that's handy. There are some other things um, which a lot of people out there like the use of, like for example Slack. Um, I myself personally find Slack a bit more of a distraction rather than a productivity tool but you know everybody has a different way of working and you've got to find the way of working which is right for you. So yes yeah, Slack is an immensely popular uh, instant messaging uh, tool. Then we also have obviously the other essentials I guess is um, your VPN and um, obviously connecting into your office is, uh, is important. I know a lot of the services that we consume these days is in the cloud but of course um, we still have uh, file shares and so forth so it's important to make sure your VPN software is functional uh, properly. And then finally, of course, you may have a PBX system, a phone system that's running from your office. Um, so there is software like 3CX, um, which uh, plugs into a, a typical voice server. Okay, so those are really the tools. Um, there's a few things other than that, just to mention Wi-Fi that you've got in the, in the house, right? So the Wi-Fi, if you're using your computer over Wi-Fi, um, the quality of your calls could be diminished by the strength of the signal. And certainly I found a few people having this uh, recently. And the reason for this is probably because you're in the back room of the house and the wireless base station is is in the front of the house. So there's a few ways you can get around this. First things first, you might not have to do anything other than cho choose the channel. So the channel that uh, a lot of people use is on the 2.4 gigahertz range, but also most wireless uh, routers these days support five gigahertz. But sometimes we're not aware of this. If you go into the settings on your wireless adapter on your PC, there's every likelihood that you can choose either five or 2.4 gigahertz. Just to explain the differences between the two, 2.4 allows you much further length. So the signal length is much further, so if you are at one end of the house and you want signal to go all the way to the other end of the house, 2.4 gigahertz is your friend. The only problem with 2.4 gigahertz is that that frequency is shared with everything. So all sorts of other devices, microwaves for example, interrupt 2.4 gigahertz, something chronic, and there's all sorts of other devices contending on that 2.4 gigahertz range. This and a few other reasons 
makes the 2.4 gigahertz signal a lot slower. So it's a narrower bandwidth, but a short, a longer range. Okay. Now the other way around is the 5 gigahertz range. Now in 5 gigahertz, the uh, the the range is much shorter. Uh, it may still be sufficient for you, but the bandwidth is much larger. So that way you you should be able, if you're close enough to the access point, to get a really high quality signal, a, a good signal strength, and also, most importantly, the higher bandwidth to allow you to, um, to, to do more high definition video or anything that consumes signal quality, uh, sorry, bandwidth in a big way. So make sure that you choose the appropriate uh, signal strength and the appropriate channel. And if you if if that hasn't helped you out, then there's a few other things you can do. So you could purchase uh, a Wi-Fi base extender, for example, with just a, a box you can plug in. You connect it to the other your main wireless access point, and then it goes off and uh, and just basically gives a boost to the signal, so you can use your wireless devices in other areas of the house. Uh, if you don't want that, then there is another uh, option called Powerline, and Powerline basically is a pl it plugs into your mains and allows you to run Ethernet cables through the mains. So rather than actually running a cable, another Ethernet cable through your house, you can actually use the mains circuit. So you plug in one at where your router is, and you take a cable from your router and plug that into the power line adapter. And then the other end where you actually have your computer, you plug the other uh, adapter in there on the wall socket and then run that cable to your computer or a little hub if you want to. And that way um, you don't have to worry about any distance as long as they've got a main socket near both both points. So that kind of solves that point, that problem. And the good thing about these is these days they come in at least 300 megabits to a, a whole gigabit uh, of speed. So again, bandwidth shouldn't be an issue with those sorts of devices. So see how you get on with that. Definitely important that you keep the quality of the signal uh, up when you're um, using high bandwidth tools such as VPNs, video conferencing and, and other things as well. Um, but the most important part of all of this, I think, is really about not the technology, it's not about the tools, it's about how you manage to stay healthy during your work. Now, um, staying healthy is a two-part process. One is mentally fit and physically fit, and both go hand in hand. So really important that if you, um, the way to stay healthy is to um, obviously go out and about and get exercise. And I can't, um, you know, I can't say that enough. Um, for the last few days, you know, I've, I've been staying in and working eight, nine hours and, and really not getting out at all. And I immediately almost feel a bit meh from it. The, the main thing to do is to get out there. And, but you, the thing you need to do is actually remember to get out. And the way that you, I've done that is I've set time aside in my schedule to say, no, nope, at 11 a.m. every single day, I'm going to stop what I'm doing on the keyboard, stand up, and then either, you know, I could, I, I could do exercise in the house, but if it's a good day outside, like today, I got out and I ran uh, locally and ran for an hour and then got back in. And uh, you know that straight away, almost almost straight away, made me feel better, more energized, and more productive at work. So it's very important to get that uh, physical exercise in because it does give you a boost mentally as well, and it does help your overall mental well-being. But it's not just about that. Uh, to keep yourself mentally stimulated and, and mentally happy, it's important that you have interaction with other people. And obviously this video conferencing aspect of it does really help that. Uh, in the mornings, every morning at uh, 10 a.m. I have a stand-up with my team and I ask everybody to switch on their video. And the reason I do this is simply because uh, I get to see everybody's faces. I get to know, you know, if they're if they're looking a bit down off a particular day. We all try and chime in and make sure that we everybody's okay. It's really important to look after everybody in this particular strange time. There's a few other things that I would suggest. Um, don't go out crazy. Don't go off buying fuel when you don't need to. Don't go off shopping when you don't need to. Just um, just act. Um, try and act as normal as you can. Um, and, and, and schedule is one thing, but also routine. I would say that it's very important to wake up at the same time every day. And I wake up at the same time that I used to for getting up for the office. And I think that's helping because it sets a routine, it sets what I'm going to do. I get out, out of my bed, I get a coffee, and then I'm straight to work. 
Um, so that way I'm, I'm quite productive. I get, I, I'm a morning person in that regard, and then I can get on with the rest of my day. I think um, if it wasn't for that, it's, there's a very big temptation to just lie in your bed and sleep in, that sort of stuff. Try to get into a routine because, or stay in your work routine. The more that you believe that you're basically still going to work, I think you'll hopefully be more successful in being able to keep that discipline of working from home. Um, I think I think generally that's that's about it. Um, I would I've I've written down here um, make it harder on yourself to use social media. So maybe you know shut down Facebook and and Twitter and all the rest. Um, and if you've got a mobile phone, maybe either switch, log out on these things um, work during the day if you can. Just suggestions like that. Um, and uh, and yeah, schedule the finish of every day as well. It's important to just know when to end your day. I certainly done nine, nine and a half hour days last week and I found that that was um, probably a little bit too much because I'd really been sitting in one place for a very, very long time and that's just not healthy. So that's that's really it. I think that's the most important thing and that's the success. Um, that will give you the success of working from home. So it's really important that we all stay together through all of this. We look after one another and, and notice when somebody's not doing so well so we can help them out. Anyway, um, that's all for this, this special edition of Al's Geek Lab. I do hope you've enjoyed the, the content. And if you do have any questions, I'd love to hear your comments as well. Please hit me up in the comments section below. Thanks.